Women's primary goal is to maintain this thing I call the perfect mental state. It is more important that they have this perfect mental state where there's nothing wrong and there's no obligation, and there's no responsibility, there's no liability, there's no chore, there is no pain, than it is to actually be successful and have progress in the real world. Reason why it's a total different caveat. I think men should have enough exposure being around women. I think every dude should have a, a female friend who's a huge slut who just tells the truth. <laughs> Who shows you yes. all the text messages, lets you see her f***ing messaging seven dudes at, at mm -hmm. the same time, sending nudes, and half of them think she's a virgin. I, like, I really, I think every guy should have a huge slut friend who just mm -hmm. f***ing lays it all out for you. And like, you're not sleeping with her, but she just tells you everything. I just have, I happen to have hundreds of slut friends who've done the same thing with me. And then that's why in my mind, it's like, I can tell, it's not that I don't think all women are bad. It's just when they are, not bad, but when women are lying, I can just kind of see, it's like, this is not, your actions are not indicative of what your mm. words are telling me. There is no one willing to tell people the truth, whether that's a therapist, guidance counselor, they don't. And I just get classic, you know, why can't I find a girl? Send me some pictures. You're fat, you dumbass. And I say, you're fat, you dumbass. Why the f do you think you can't find the girls? Yeah. You're gonna waste your time and my time here. Don't even bother chasing girls until you lose the weight. So that, that kind of truth was, there was a huge market for it. And it was a breath of fresh air and people will pay for it. Does that just make myself start yelling? And that usually gets me through. Yeah. Yeah. I give them a lot of homework. <laughs> There's a lot of screaming. And I usually say something to the effect of, have you looked in the mirror? If you went to prison, you're the first guy getting butt. Yeah. Like I say that to them to their face and they're Good. just like, what? And then all of a sudden the call is very interesting to me. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I very much enjoy coaching. It's a lot of <laughs> slap the table and let's say, let's fucking go. And there's a guy, let's fucking go. I'm like, bro, what is wrong? <laughs> Wake the f I'll call. Like I'll have girls in my apartment. I'll be like, come over here come and watch this. this. Come yeah. here and watch yeah. this. Do it again in front of her right now. Wake the fuck up. And you do that. And all of a sudden this call, which I agree with you, because I've done, I do, you know, I have 800 clients now. Like when they do stuff and I'm like losing, I can feel my, them draining my energy. They're just like an energy vampire. I just turn the whole thing around and I turn into Ray Lewis. Mm -hmm. I just start screaming and getting. That's and then, what they just, need. They yeah. didn't have a dad that did it. Yes. They didn't have a coach that did it. And that's, that's exactly what I've had it where I've literally gotten them to the point like seriously why are you alive and i can't say the s word yeah, i can never recommend it but i'm always like seriously what are you doing here like if you're so miserable i mean you got 60 more years of this shit based on your life expectancy so do you want to go through with that and then they come back like thanks man i read people need the shit kicked out of them yeah they do and so that's yeah and that's but i hate doing it one-on-one -on -one during during the great depression the dust bowl the late 1890s in the mm. wild west the world kicked sh the shit out of yeah, people you didn't did. need a motivational coach you just needed to eat mm -hmm. you needed a reason to you, eat you needed no welfare state yes that would, yeah you needed something to kill in order to eat in order to live um one thing I, I thought was interesting when you talk about depression people were happier during the rebuilding stage after world war ii in germany than mm. they were once in once the germany had been rebuilt and mm. you talk about about having a goal and a purpose and not having that causing depression. Mm -hmm. I tried to figure out how to overcome laziness because ultimately at the at the core of all my clients' problems, 99% of it is you're lazy, you don't want to do the work. That's it. And whether it's getting a job or finding, I'm sad, I'm depressed, and I look at them, I say, yeah, if I lived at home and didn't have a job and only had pot to do and I was fat, I'd be depressed too. It's normal. You're not doing anything. Get up and do something. But <clears throat> on the opposite side of that, is laziness and laziness was a survival mechanism. The reason we're all innately lazy because we didn't have food all over the place. You had to conserve your energy. So I don't even necessarily fault people for being lazy because it's how you survive for so long in the past. But now it's like that is assessing reality. That's not the case anymore. You gotta get up. So you need a philosophical reason to get up that's more powerful then your laziness keeping you down. And not only should I, do I point out, like, you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life like this, and the pain will end when you get off your ass. I say, you get to do something. Like, you, the, the one thing you have to do is self supportation It will give you something to do. Yes, it's going to suck. Yes, it's going to hurt. Uh, but by the end of the day, you're going to be and feel better off than you are now, and you're and basically navel-gazing, feeling sorry for yourself. And so I pointed that out is here are the Germans obliterated obliterated like you get to pick up rubble i don't know how long but they had years of picking up rubble and then they slowly built this and then also once i got on easy mode then they're all depressed because they didn't have something to do uh do you remember the family guy episode where wiley e. coyote actually catches the road runner no that sounds good god nice. watch it because wiley e. coyote he finally catches the road runner, breaks his neck and then his other friend 
you know, another coyote comes up. Oh, geez, Sam. No, Wiley, uh, what are you going to do now? He's like, I, I don't know. I, I, I've never been here before. I, this is great. So that just shows him slowly decaying where he's like watching TV and then drinking. And he's got a prostitute coyote or all that. It just goes to, and I think he ends up hanging himself. It's like you need something to do before you commit to a life of this absolute miserable hellhole you're in now, could you just try and get a job and pay rent and see what happens? And so using German, post-war Germany as an example, is like they were happy, they did the polling. And then about 90s Helmut Kohl era, yeah, they're all sad and depressed. It's like, well, maybe go, I don't know, rebuild another country. Don't invade another one. You've done that twice, but maybe, I don't know, find some purpose. But Getting back to the original point, it was, well, if you had women that loved you and you had kids, you'd have something to do. But yeah. that's off the table now. Uh, one thing I really appreciate, so because I coach mostly men, mm -hmm. I do. there are some women that are involved in my program, but they're not, they're not paid clients. They're just people that jump on our calls. Uh, because I coach mostly men, one of the things that I notice is that there's no safety net for men. So like, for instance, if they keep getting fatter, women stop sleeping with them mm -hmm. and the world gives them a very real dose of reality. If they don't make enough money, they can't afford certain things and the world gives, unless they're living in their mom's basement or right, on their welfare. Right. What I'm saying is we call this in the US military self-critiquing. So for instance, if you go land the plane and you forget to put the gear down, it's self-critiquing. You can only do it once. <laughs> and then it like you never make that mistake again, right? right. When I leave the apartment without my keys or my glasses, as soon as I walk out, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, now I realize self-critiquing. For men, most of our mistakes and our shortcomings are self-critiquing. If we do this thing, we go up and try to steal a guy's girlfriend and he's bigger than us, then he beats the of us, like right. the, the, these kind of things. For women, there seems to be the safety net that they have because of their physical attractiveness and even past their level of physical attractiveness, there's still a good number of men that will sleep with them. Mm -hmm. There's a safety net for them. And because of that, and in addition to the emotionality, you talk about telling women anything constructive and how it just doesn't seem to work when you tell them something constructive as opposed to men. And I don't think it's because men are smarter than women. I think it is seriously because when we do things wrong, there's a punishment for us. The world is constantly telling us no. And so you've, you've found this, because again, I have a, most of my friends right now are female. And when I talk to them about things, I'm like, hey, so here's what's gonna happen with you and this guy. You're gonna tell me you're not gonna this dude again. You're gonna get drunk around Thursday, Friday. You're gonna text him, he's gonna you. You're gonna feel terrible about it. You're gonna hit me up. I'm not gonna judge you, but then you're gonna go back and you're gonna have sex with him again. So even though I'm gonna tell you everything's wrong with this dude, you're gonna go fuck him anyway. So, you know, there's really no point. Have you found a, a similar I have, experience? that's why I don't consult women generally. They yeah. have to be, they're pretty desperate and destitute. I don't mean in a bad way. They've hit rock bottom and when they're coming to me and some women are sincere about it, but I have found that most of my efforts to constructively criticize women, like just simply getting, my, my book Worthless is over 12 years old. The women of today would not have their financial troubles if they read that book and did what was in the book, <clears throat> not majoring in dumb stuff. I have found women are just impervious to constructive criticism unless they are in true state of crisis. And it's the Bill Burr quote, uh, women are surrounded by this tornado of misinformation and nobody corrects them because we all want to fuck. And there's always a captain save a hoe. Men are always shielding women from reality, even if it is the consequences of their own mistakes. And so uh, you can't beat that. And what it inevitably, I don't know, you ever hear of the perfect mental state? No. Okay, it's, I had to come up with this concept as to why you can't get a girl to major in engineering, why you can't get a girl yeah. to hit the gym and slim down to find the guy. <clears throat> and what I realized is that women's primary goal is to maintain this thing what I call the perfect mental state. Mm. It is more important that they have this perfect mental state where there's nothing wrong and there's no obligation and there's no responsibility, there's no liability, there's no chore, there is no pain, than it is to actually be successful and have progress in the real world. And so I like and I have like a, a goal dream. The goal of every woman is to get Ryan Gosling. The dream is to do it without any effort. Like he just shows up and likes her, you know? <clears throat> Did you hear that one girl talking to uh, Mac and Murphy saying Ryan Gosling was average? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, um, it, it, like even Ryan Gosling's not enough, uh, just so well, I wanna point out. Anyway, so because there's always a, they've, they've never had death yeah. consequent because a guy will usually come in and like, yeah. okay, well you didn't change your oil, the car broke down, I'll pick you up and drive you. So, but whatever, when you try to say, look, if you do these things, you will have progress in the real world because those things require work, sacrifice, or ultimately 
changing the real world perception forever. Like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Like I have to change oil every 5,000 miles. Oh, they will immediately go back to the perfect mental state and simply ignore it. Yes. And then, then you could say, then the next stage is when you try to introduce some kind of real for their own benefit. Like if I, okay, let me, let me see if you can guess this. Handful of times I've talked to girls about their degree choices. The girl says, I'm going to major in journalism. I say that is a stupid major. You're going to be poor. You're going to be financially destitute. Look at your millennial elder sisters. What's their reaction? Like, I'm going to do it anyway. Or like, that's not me. I, the, whenever I bring up statistics to women, they're like, those statistics don't count for me. Okay. Or my favorite one is statistics don't cover everyone. And I'm like, yes, they do. <laughs> that's why they're called statistics. They cover everyone. I wish it was that nice. Yeah. I'm immediately misogynist. Or, Were you killing my dreams? Like I'm the bad guy. Yeah. And, and and I only got so much time in my life. I am not going to waste it trying to convince women to do the right thing. And so having this this concept of the perfect mental state is like, look, they're not going to listen. They they aren't. They really aren't. And you could be the most well intended person. Like, look, you really ought to do this. And it goes back to, look, you're going to fuck this guy. You know, you could yeah. say, don't fuck this guy. But that ruins the. She wants. To like the you're, you're going to keep sleeping with him. He's never going to commit. You're going to end up hurt. And everything I just said, while I do appreciate saying it, and I'm playing Madden, like I don't even like, and, but you're going to go him in probably 48 hours. Take care. All you heard, all she heard was you're going to go fuck him. And then she filled in the rest. And then he's going to finally commit to me. And Oprah made billions off of it. Sure. She made billions off of that. Like, oh yeah, you could be a pain in the ass woman. And you can be married to whoever was hot back in the eighties. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Mel Gibson. But yeah, that's, that is kind of where. And I'm, I'm, it's not that I don't want to help women. If you come to my consulting thing and you, you know, I'm like, okay, here's, you got to do this and you got to do that. But once I'm paid, I don't care if you follow my advice anymore. It is the genesis of Apple consulting. That was banking. Okay. All banking. My very first book was called Behind the Housing Crash. Worthless was second. I was the guy trying to stop banks from lending to bad real estate deals. And the amount of hell and guff I caught from bosses, bankers, VPs, all that other stuff we do. Syndicated loans where there'd be other banks involved because the loan amount was so much, you'd have to have other banks pool in money. And I was looking at the numbers. I'm like, this is not working. Why are we approving? People wouldn't have their tax returns for two years because they had them on extension or whatever. I'm like, why Why are we approving this guy's loan? I don't know the personal guarantor. So what ended up happening is uh, the housing bubble collapsed. I was right. And all my life, I, I remember I was like 30. All my life I was doing what I was told. Older people knew better. You should obey your supervisors. And then I realized like, this is all bullshit. Everything, not only in banking and work and all that, but dating, everything was a lie. It was all a lie. And that's why I kind of, I don't know, went Mad Max, went rogue. Couldn't tolerate the sitting in meetings and placating people when the data was the complete opposite. And so in addition to financial consulting, but they, like, cause you start seeing everyone's lying about this bullshit. No one's telling the truth. Am I the only one that sees the emperor has no clothes? So I came up with this idea of ask consulting because by this time I had it, my blog was established. I did have a podcast. I did have a YouTube channel, but it wasn't anything fancy. Uh, I was like, people were also emailing me because of all my finance books. They had a lot of questions. I didn't have time to answer them anymore. So I'm like, I will charge money for this. They'll politely tell them to go away. It would be a Japanese refusal. <clears throat> if people do pay me, I could curse and swear and be myself and give the finger to everyone in the world. Yeah. Took off like a shot because I think other people were sick and tired of being lied to by previous generation. What started is kind of like beer money. I, I remember I had the idea. I was driving across uh, Kansas late one night, heading back to me, the Twin Cities. I was like, what if I had a consulting thing where I could yell and curse and be myself? But it would be a polite way to tell people I can't answer their, their questions anymore. And so that's how it kind of was born. And then we're coming up 10 years. March will be 10 years. Uh, and it just kind of grew because I think every generation, we're just, we're not telling people the truth anymore. Yeah. And these young people, male or female, how do I get the girls? Why can't I find a job? Da, 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 da. You go to the old guard and, well, you're just not working tomorrow. You need an MBA. And I come in, I'm like, you know Josh Fluke? No. no. All right, he's a millennial and he does a great job exposing what bullshit corporate America is and how it's not fair to like, you just shouldn't even bother. It's kind of the same thing here, but what a, more of a dear Abby, whatever the topic is.